Andrew, this just is not what you normally see in people's backyards. This is just no, amazing. No, there we've got a 900 foot high cinder cone volcano. I mean, we're blown away by the scale here, but imagine going back to Mount St. Helens 1980, the, the top two and a half thousand feet of the mountain was blown away and hundreds of square miles were affected by that eruption. Step back further in history, you go to the Yellowstone eruption. Some of the volcanic ash from that eruption was blown all the way down to Texas. So we go back through the geologic record, back in time, the scale gets larger and larger. Mm. In fact, we can say that the volcanic eruptions we experience today are a leftover from greater activity in the past. When we look at the geologic record, we see some of the lava flows that are there. This lava flow might have been about 12 feet thick at maximum and it's only one lava flow. You go to India, for example, and you have a stack of lava flows 10 to 20 feet thick oh. that stack up for 1,000 feet oh and cover a third of the Indian subcontinent, oh. which was one vast outpouring. On a small scale, people might be familiar with the Pacific Northwest of the US, the Columbia River basalts. There was a similar sort of eruption with thick lava flows, but over a much smaller area, but it's still several orders of magnitude larger in scale to what we see here in this location. So it tells us that things were happening at a vaster scale and therefore at a greater catastrophic rate in the past with, with this volcanism, for example. But there are other geological processes as well.